Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our talk. Would you rather be anywhere else? I don't. I don't want to be anywhere else. I want to be here hanging out with you guys in our um, our virtual TV show. I don't know what you call it, but uh, I know that I have a special effects lighting right there. Look at that glow right there. Isn't that cool? This little glow. Yeah. Chris, what's up? Don, good morning. Welcome to Art Talk. Another week of uh, of a choice. It could be a week of awesome. It could be a week of, week of disaster. Up to you. Up to you. Uh, you decide based on um, uh, your choices of what you want to do today. Happy Monday. I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited because this week on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, it's my birthday. It's my birthday on Friday. So I get to celebrate uh, this week. Uh, and I chose to celebrate this week of being Mustang week. That's just kind of what I chose. I'm not. I'm not partial to uh, Chevy, to Mopar, to uh, Ford. I'm not partial to to anyone. Uh, my favorite car is the one with four wheels. You know that's how it works. So I hope you guys are uh, celebrating uh, with me this week. We will be doing an art talk on my birthday, cause cause I can, and and we don't really have anything else to do. So. Um, you know, while the rest of the world is getting their ass kicked and handed to them uh, in Puerto Rico and in in Mexico, people are getting beat up because they're they're going outside. Uh, we don't have to contend with that. You can go outside and 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 don't have to worry too much about it. Just got to you know be careful. What's up, Timbo? Uh, Jerry, good morning. Today's uh, subject for our talk. This is episode two hundred and fifty eight. Uh, how to maintain joy in a sea of fear? Yeah. How do we maintain joy? How do we keep joy as part of our life when it looks like the rest of the world is just going nuts, just going plain nuts. Well, I have the answer for you. It's right there. Yeah. Uh, the answer lies in, in us focusing on, on what we want to focus on versus just randomly focusing on, on whatever ever just gets presented to us. And I used yesterday, uh, I be who a, <laughs> how a, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, Jerry, but that's, uh, I'm happy for you. You got three exclamation points. That works for me. Um, you know, how, how do you, um, how do you maintain joy? Uh, you got to choose joy. Simple as that. You got to choose it. You got to be diligent. You got to get in there and you got to decide that's what I'm doing. Uh, what's up Luke Shannon. Thanks for joining us. This is our talk episode 258. Uh, and we're going to talk momentarily in a, in a, in a, in a minute. Once we get through some of the, the up-to-date stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about how to maintain joy in a sea of fear. Yeah, it's actually not that hard. Not that hard. Uh, it's just it's just that it requires you to choose wisely as opposed to just choosing, you know, uh, randomly choosing without necessarily, uh, you know, we, we choose all the time. We choose kind of what kind of book you want to read. You choose what you want to have for dinner. You choose what underwear to put on. You know, why can't we choose what to focus on? Uh, uh, most people don't. You know, it's it's uh, that allure, Randy. It's the allure uh, of, uh, of wanting, uh, to be important, of wanting to be right. And we got to let that go. We're going to let that go. We're going to work on that today. Anyway, this is our talk. I am Fireball. I'm your host today. Uh, and, uh, we've been doing this 258, uh, not days in a row, but pretty close, pretty close. Uh, this is one of our shows. The other show is Fireball Malibu Vlog, uh, episode 970 something is coming tomorrow. And we decided that, you know, we used to do the vlog every single day, and it, it, it's a chore. It's a chore. It's a lot to do, a lot to do. So uh, we're switching things up. We're closing in on 1,000 episodes, and we're going to be doing a vlog every Tuesday. That's going to be our new model, and the reason we're doing that is because we got Art Talk. Uh, we got a lot of projects that we're going on that we're doing. We got a, a museum to maintain. We got a lot of things uh, that we have to do. So if I do one episode a week, uh, I'm still giving you guys lots of other stuff. Uh, Randy, I went to the beach yesterday, Lake Erie and Marsh for my walks. The virus couldn't get me. Of course, it, it can't get you. Um, yeah, well, uh, uh, I think I saw something that you posted, Randy, on that. Uh, it looked uh, very beautiful. Uh, I always like to see, you know, what people people are out and about doing stuff. Um, uh, I have I have kind of a, a, a concern about that. Uh, not, not you, Randy, but... Um, uh, 
uh, something happened to me the other day, uh, and I just want to share it with you guys, and uh, we're going to get into that in a second. But it was a, a story about being at the store and how people were acting, and, and this is a good example, and I, I thought this might uh, help you guys a little bit in your perspective about kind of what's going on in the world and what you can choose to uh, to maintain for yourself. So uh, we have a vlog coming uh, tomorrow, so it's going to be every Tuesday from now on uh, for the time being. And... Um, you guys can look forward to that. Uh, tomorrow's episode, we're focusing on the 1981 Excalibur, <laughs> which is a kooky car. Uh, we're going to get into that. This is going to be kind of fun. Uh, some other things, too. Uh, today, today, well, today I'm cleaning my bathroom. Yep. Uh, I'm going to clean my bathroom unlike any time I have ever cleaned it before. Kathy and I are going to get in there. Uh, we're going to get rid of the cobwebs. I'm not sure if there is any cobwebs. It just kind of sounds... Kind of sounds nasty though when you talk about oh yeah in their bathroom there's my there's cobwebs you know living room you know cobwebs like I haven't touched it in like years right so um, it makes it sound like the Munsters house yeah and that's uh, that's what we're gonna do today kind of excited about that um, coloring book of the day this is Mustang Week we are focusing on Mustang Week uh, Mustangs uh, throughout the week which I'm kind of excited about uh, like I said I'm not uh, I'm not privy to uh, to Mopar, to to Chevy, to Ford. I, I'm the guy that, that loves four wheels. I'm the guy that loves your stories. It doesn't hap, happen to be uh, uh, Mustangs. It can be, uh, yeah, it can be Volkswagen buses. It can be anything. So, uh, but uh, this week is Mustang week. Next week we'll do uh, Corvette week, vintage trailer week. You know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with stuff that'll be kind of fun. Uh, we'll even take suggestions and we'll focus that entire week on posting uh, cool cars, not not the standard stuff like a, here's a classic muscle car, you know, here's a, a, a red Mustang. No, I'm talking about the kooky stuff, the crazy stuff, the stuff like in our coloring book. Well, that's not that kooky. Let me find the kooky one. Yeah, look at that. That's kooky. That's crazy. A little bit of a uh, snakeish going on there. This is our uh, uh, Mustang book, so it's Mustang week. This is what we're what we're doing, what we're focusing on. It's not backwards. I'm backwards. That's not, that's backwards. You got to get my drift. If you've watched our talk before, you know kind of the, the drill, but uh, the car of the day is a, a Mustang, of course, but this is a very special Mustang because this one I bought the day my granddaughter was born, and I wrote that right on there, 4818. Yeah, she's a little airy, so uh, my birthday is the end of this week, and her birthday is on the 8th, and we're celebrating. But this is the car that I bought for her. This is uh, her first car in her collection. Uh, I bought her a Mustang. Yeah. And then and then every time some uh, amazing event happened, you know, uh, she stood up for the first time, or she said her first word, which was, um, I don't know. I don't know what her first word. I think it was, I think it was Cookie. I'm pretty sure it was Cookie. She's got a whole host of them now. But I bought a car when, when she... And I actually wrote it on there. So we'll look at that uh, on a later week because this is Mustang week. This is what we're focusing on. Uh, coloring book of the day. Uh, uh, but a book of the day. I thought I'd show you guys a little bit of my collection of books that I have because uh, there's a lot of great stuff and uh, people don't necessarily collect books so much anymore. But they're still still nice to be able to hold these things. But this is a book that's put out by my friend Mike Zarnock right here. This is uh, Hot Wheels, uh, Warman's uh, Hot Wheels Field Guide 4th Edition. I'm sure there's another edition. But you can find out anything you want about any car and their values up to that point um, if you're looking for stuff. This is a really great reference book. So, Mike, uh, if you get a chance to watch Art Talk, I'm, I'm pimping your book, buddy. I don't get a portion of these, you know. But he did send me one of these books, which is nice. Uh, very cool. And uh, it's uh, on Amazon's $14.99, you know. It's a, it's a cool thing. And it says, Mike Zarnock is a two-time Guinness World Record holder for the most different Hot Wheels cars and is considered one of the leading experts in Hot Wheels, in which he is. Included in the Diecast Hall of Fame 2009, Zarnock has written eight books on Hot Wheels cars. Check out Mike on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, um, tell him Fireball sent you. Uh, Mike Zarnock, Z-A-R-N-O-C-K. Check him out. Uh, he watches uh, Art Talk from time to time. What's up, Gelman? Uh, Robert Smith, thanks for watching today's Art Talk. Good morning, Tina. Lovely ladies in the house. Uh, same thing with you, Jacqueline. Um, getting all these nasty-looking guys out of the way. I'm just kidding, dudes. I'm just kidding. You guys are all studs. Studs. That's the way it goes. Keith Martin, stud. Nigel Brunt, stud. Who else we got? Randy. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, okay. What else we got? Um, uh, Art Talk is... Uh, 
uh, as we mentioned, is it's uh, number 258. We're going to start posting these on YouTube uh, because I think that there is there's people uh, there that still are not watching here live, and they watch them later on. So uh, we're start going to start doing that. And if this is something that you guys uh, enjoy, as always, please share it. I'll let people know that we hang out and uh, every day, and we uh, we do some fun stuff. And that, uh, as a reminder, uh, the vlog, uh, Fireball Malibu vlog, which will be on tomorrow, an episode will be coming tomorrow, will be happening every Tuesday from this point on. Okay, let's talk about our subject of the day, how to maintain joy in a in a sea of fear, in a world that seems to be wrapped around in fear. Well, uh, the, the first part is we have to realize uh, our connection with the end. And there are a lot of people out there that have a perception that God is uh, um, uh, in the traditional church sense. And so they go to church every Sunday and they pray and they do a lot of the things that, that the, the, church, the, church, the, church, the church teaches uh, in the traditional sense, unfortunately, what that does is it is it really creates separation because it makes God a a uh, the perception of God as something that's separate from you, and then somehow you have to connect to it, and uh, and that is a, a very very old paradigm. The new paradigm for the 21st century is that you are God, your subconscious is God, and everything that God can do, you can do. Now, I'm not talking about changing the weather, but it is interesting that if you have studied the law of attraction or studied vibration or studied uh, the science of quantum physics, you'll start to understand that you can affect many things uh, that you did not uh, realize you could affect before. Now, we talked uh, yesterday about the barking dog and the barking dog is, is, is trying to vie for your attention. Here's an example. We had a neighbor that was an absolute kook and this neighbor was doing crazy ass stuff that was driving us nuts and we were just you know, uh, beside ourselves uh, consumed with what this neighbor was doing. And the more we thought about it, the worse it got. Uh, know anything that's happening right now that, that you kind of can relate to somewhat? Then uh, something happened, uh, especially with Kathy. Uh, she said, she decided at some point, she goes, you know what? I'm just not going to give my attention to her. When she walks by, if I see her on the street, I am going to turn the other direction. I'm going to ignore her. I'm going to make her disappear out of my life in my own mind. Well, less than a month later, she moved away. She literally packed up all her shit and she moved away. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. We have changed our experience based on the way that we thought about it, the way we perceived it. Now, this is one example, only one example. Now, I could cite hundreds of examples about this because it's happened for me in, in my life from time to time, but I never necessarily put them together. Suddenly I'm like, wait a second, you know, I think there's something here, something really interesting. So uh, if you were to look at the current situation in the world, and if you were to turn your cheek as Jesus did, which is what he meant, stop giving your attention to things that are harming you and start giving your attention to coolness, <laughs> like, like art talk, right? Uh, then uh, imagine what your life might, uh, how your life might change. Greg, what's up? I'm giving you a wave, buddy. I just waved at you. I'm not sure if it worked, but uh, we Christians believe that God lives within us, the Holy Spirit, so God isn't so distant. Um, uh, that's that's great, Randy. If that if that's what works for you, then that's what you should do. If 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 it somehow creates connection to Source for you, then that's what you should do. The problem is faced is that when people say, well, I'm, I'm a, a Protestant. I, I don't know all the different religions. You know, I'm this or I'm that. I'm Muslim. And, and my way is the right way. No, no, your way can't be the right way. My, you know, and we get into these arguments about the right way. You know what? The right way is your way. Every one of you that's watching Art Talk, you have a way in which you connect the source. Some of you meditate. Some of you hold your fingers a certain way. Some of you do this and do that. Uh, the question is, is it working? And if it's working, keep doing it. Keep doing it because we want to get closer to joy every day and away from negativity and fear. And we do this uh, starting with our mind, with our thoughts, okay? So we want to realize the power of the end. And the end is that we want to be connected to source. And in source is joy, okay? The only way that you can connect to joy is by being joyful. The only way that you can bring love into your life is by giving love, okay? So people are very sad because they're lacking something in their life. 
Uh, and the only thoughts that they give towards that thing is thoughts of lack. They're disappointed. They're uh, um, disconnected. They're, you know, and we've done a great job right now. The society's doing a great job of trying to disconnect us, but we're not disconnected. We're not, we're physically disconnected, but we're talking right now. What does it matter whether I'm sitting in your living room uh, talking with you, having a cup of coffee and eating some chocolate? Just a suggestion so that the next time I come visit, we have some chocolate. Uh, that, or, or here, this is live, and uh, we get to uh, uh, do what we do and, and enjoy ourselves and somehow pump each other up so that we can take on the day like, like motherfuckers. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. And I can say whatever words I want. I can say poop if I want to say poop. I can because it's my show, right? Uh, I'll try to limit the, you know, the excrement jokes from time to time. Um, but uh, uh, a, a, a big thing that is happening that I've noticed... Uh, yes, Greg, love is contagious. Uh, and that's important. And it's in, in, important to not only recognize that, but do that, to do that, to put that out there. Okay. So, uh, but what I know, so I was in the store the other day and uh, this lady that was a couple of people in front of me was very angry uh, for some reason. I didn't know what it was at first, but we were in the line that says 15 items or less, but the light wasn't on. And there was a guy in front of her that had a whole basket full of stuff. And he went through and took his took some time to do his stuff. And, and I was busy, you know, looking at my phone, you know, looking at the shit that you guys post. And uh, um, But you could tell this woman was very angry. Now, I'm not saying this to you guys to complain about here. I'm trying to use this as an example to show you guys what's going on out in the world so you can, you can understand this and that you can make a choice about what you want to put out into the world. So this woman, once that man was through and he left... This woman decided to uh, go out of her way to let the checker have it. So she went back and she talked to this checker, this guy that was is a very nice guy, super nice guy uh, up at Ralph's here, and uh, let him have it for allowing this guy to come through with all this and waste her time, waste her time, right? Now she went on for two minutes uh, talking about how her time was being wasted by this guy. And I finally ha had, had enough. And I finally said to her, that um, you're wasting everyone's time by complaining and criticizing about this guy. This guy's gone. He's been gone for two minutes. You can just do your stuff, go get in your car and, and head back home. Uh, and then she said, well, I'm just trying to play by the rules. And I said, well, the rule here in this line is that uh, you don't complain. You go do get, or do your stuff and then you go about your business, right? Um, but uh, her choice was a poor choice was a poor choice because what it did was it not only it disrupted our peace and everybody else, but it, what it really did was it disrupted her own peace. She wasn't protecting her own joy. She wasn't making the decision to experience joy in her life. She was making the decision to experience a tumultuous experience, you know, that was unfortunate. Now that's, there's a lot of that stuff going on right now. Now, what this brings me to is that every time you post something online, things like art talk, things like photos, uh, uh, you take a risk. You take a risk. Now, you can limit the risk by posting things that you know from the end will make people feel good. Or you can post more, uh, st st more stats, more updates, more uh, criticism about what people should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing. Uh, I noticed that uh, a friend of mine posted uh, yesterday uh, that people were out and about and ignoring the stay-at-home rule, the law. Uh, and, and they couldn't help themselves, but continued to post how wrong everybody is for not abiding by this, this law or this enforced thing. Um, and another example of not, not thinking from the end. Uh, she wasn't uh, putting goodness out into the world. She was criticizing and pointing out what people are doing wrong. Now, if you spend your time doing that, you, you usurp, I love that word, your, you usurp your own joy by not thinking from the end and by inviting criticism yourself, okay? And there's going to be people that are going to read that and they're going to say, why don't you mind your own business? You know, why don't you get busy instead of taking pictures, going out and taking pictures of these people uh, having a good time along the coast, uh, why don't you just go busy, get busy, clean your bathroom, you know, or do something that's going to make you feel good about your own life, 
uh, and uh, it doesn't. It's not helping. It's not helping the overall cause by making people wrong. Uh, and but people are thinking that you're you're uh, you know these these people that do this kind of stuff think that they're helping or they're creating awareness or they've uh, put it upon themselves to be that that person that needs to do that for everybody else. And I want you guys to think about this, about what you go about doing today. Rick, Abate, what's up? Ivan Schreiber, who else we got? Randy, Greg, love you guys. Appreciate you guys being here with me today. Um, uh, think about what you're putting out into the world. Uh, it's very, very important that we, that we really think through to the end. What do we want here? What are we trying to achieve here? It's not hard to post things that are cool. It's not hard to post positive stuff. There's videos, there's photos, there's memes, there's all kinds of nonsense. There's uh, comedians, there's all kinds of amazing things that you guys could post that are going to put smiles on people's faces and, and bring joy to people and thus maintain your own joy. You have to make that, that aware decision today. There are a million things that you can do to, that, that at the end of the day, you're going to say, I had an incredible day. Fuck what's going on in the world and all this 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 nonsense because it's always going on. It just this is the flavor of the of the month or you know it's it's happening. I'm not saying that it's not happening. I'm not saying that people aren't suffering, but there's always people suffering. Every time a, a, a terrorist attack, people suffer. Every time uh, somebody you know gets online and yells at somebody and, and creates creates some kind of of uh, anxiety somewhere, people are suffering. People tell me that does not mean that you have to suffer. You have to make better choices. And if you're going to choose to post something online, you have to take responsibility for what you post. Now, you're gonna you're gonna come across people. I uh, I posted something this morning, which was a uh, uh, a an, a thing about a uh, a Mustang a Mustang uh, and that was in a scene from Transformers, which I you know are fun movies. And uh, uh, someone made it a point on one of the Mustang clubs to leave a post that was uh, not just kind of negative, was really, really bad, really bad. And, uh, and I felt bad for them because as a result of that, they need to be blocked, which is the first thing that we do because we're not going to engage with that kind of stuff. And they also get reported to the club. And then they end up getting booted out of the club. And these are, are simple things that people can't control their propensity to put that stuff out there. Not realizing that from the end, you're going to reap the rewards of what you put out there. So you got to make sure you put out coolness. As custodians of cool that we are, the more coolness you put out there, the more coolness is going to come back to you. And honestly, Randy, the virus can't touch you wherever you are. If all you do is put out joy into the world, stop making yourself self-important and start putting out uh, importance for others. Are you drinking juice or coffee today? I don't have any. I don't have any coffee. I don't have any juice. But I think Kathy's making peanut butter toast. I smell something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she's coming in today. Uh, we're just gonna. Uh, we're gonna keep going. Okay. Um, uh, criticizing derails your focus. It derails your focus. It it puts you on a path to uh, uncoolness. You know, we don't want that. We don't want that. But it requires effort. Uh, it's not just about being aware and me saying these things. You guys actually have to go out and do them. I have to go out and do that today. I have to spend the day working on on keeping myself up. That means I got to eat right. It means I got to exercise. It means I got to I got to concentrate on doing fun stuff, even if it's just in my house, right? If you have a house and a roof over your head, you're blessed. There's a lot of people right now that don't have that. And you don't have to go to another country to see it. You could probably walk down the street in any town that you're in and see that. Okay? You're blessed. Okay? So make sure that you put that reminder in the minds of other people. Suggest things that empower. Okay? I want you guys to work on that today. Uh, and get busy. You know, work out, clean, organize, do all the things that you know you need to do, haven't had the chance to do, and uh, um, and be like, uh, you know, I, I have I have three three friends, close friends to me, and these three guys are very very similar. They never complain. They don't make uh, things about themselves. You know, like what about me? 
You know those people. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, they're uh, incredibly humble, incredibly giving. And these are the type of people that I want to be around. And, uh, and you have to make a conscious choice. If there are uh, Dr. No's in your life right now, you need to distance yourself and not give them the barking dog your attention. You know those people that, that you know, Kathy's got a few people uh, in her life that text her and send her stats thinking that they're helping. And they're not helping. We don't need stats. We need coolness. Okay? You want to get through this and get to the end, then stay your focus. Stay your focus on the things that create joy. Put joy into the world. Stop criticizing. Okay? Even the subtle stuff. A lot of people, I have friends that, that uh, make jokes out of uh, the, the thing that's, that's going on in the world today. And uh, even that's not good because uh, it, it, from their standpoint, it's a little bit of levity, but it's still reminding people, it's still reminding people. And you need to, to disassociate yourself with that negativity and put in, uh, put more coolness into the world. Into the world. Okay, I'm going to open this up for a little Q&A. If you, anybody's got a question about anything, I don't care what it is, um, uh, you can ask me down below and we will we'll address it as they come in uh, as we start to wrap up our talk. Randy uh, says some friends need to be put to the periphery and some need to be moved to the inner circle. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, easier said than done though, right, Randy? You know, you got like family members or you got people that got your phone number and you don't want them to have your phone number. You got these things, but it's time to clean house. That's really what this is about. Okay? Literally and metaphorically, it's time to clean house. You have an opportunity. You have the greatest, probably the greatest opportunity in your lifetime to make the decision to start a new business or to build a car or to, uh, to say yes to something that you would normally say no to or to say no to something you've been normally saying yes to. You have an opportunity here. This is an incredible possibility. And I'm excited for you guys. And you're saying yes to our talk, which is number 258, by the way. We do this every weekday morning, Pacific Standard Time from Malibu, California. We appreciate that you're watching. Uh, Randy says, what is your favorite thing about being an artist and living in Malibu? Um, well, uh, the truth about being an artist is that we are all artists. It all depends on what we're cultivating. If you, if you play an instrument, if you... Uh, uh, if you build cars, if you write a business plan, uh, all of those things are creative forces. As a physical artist, uh, what I what I do for a living, I've done that since I was a little kid, and I I would use I would carry uh, 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 three by five index cards around in my back pocket, and I would just draw cars any chance I got. You know, I would always sit in the back of class because in the very last seat because that allowed me to draw and to uh, not pay attention to math or some of the things I didn't want to pay attention to. So I, I can't say that I made a conscious decision to be an artist. I think that was part of my makeup uh, as a physical artist, as far as an, an illustrator. Uh, so, and living in Malibu, I have to give uh, that credit to Kathy because when I met Kathy, she was living in Malibu and I wasn't. And uh, I uh, I never really even considered, you know, I grew up in, in Palos Verde, it's a beautiful place, Ojai, a beautiful place. I just knew that wherever I ended up, it would be beautiful. And I was committed to that. And that no matter where I lived, um, I wouldn't care if it was a small, tiny hole in the wall, as long as it was beautiful. That was my my decision. And I and I, culti and I cultivated that for a long time. And I've given that, uh, that credit goes to my mom. My mom was a... Um, a proponent of no matter what I did or, or if I was going to walk to school, I was going to walk to school on the most beautiful path. I was going to make a conscious decision to recognize beauty. And that was something that my mom gave me. So I've been cultivating that. And that's, uh, uh, so that's kind of how I feel uh, that if you, uh, if you live in a beautiful place, uh, you feel tranquil, uh, you feel serene, and you get reminded by the sheer beauty of Malibu. And beauty exists everywhere. It exists everywhere. Lake, Lake Erie is certainly a beautiful place. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, our goal today is to get as creative as we can. Mind your own business. Stop worrying about what other people are doing, whether they're out and about, riding their bike, doing all kinds of whatever they're doing. Let them do it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Wynn says, always nice to tune in. Hear your great words of wisdom, especially nowadays, you rock. I appreciate that, Kevin. Thank you so much. Um, we all have to do our part, and uh, and this is something that I can do, you know, uh, in, if, if, if people are willing to listen. Um, but uh, uh, I'm uh, excited about who you're, you're going to go out and, and do this for yourself. Do you recommend the book, The Artist's Way by Ju uh, Julia Cameron? Uh, I do, absolutely. In fact, it's on Kathy's desk at the moment. 
Uh, great book. Good stuff. Uh, for sure. Uh, Don, beauty, yes. Uh, yes, Kathy is beauty. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Uh, Bobby Eidman, thanks for joining us today. Uh, so um, uh, today we have an opportunity to exercise our mind. Get out there. Uh, exercise to think from the end. Think about at the end. What do you want for today? Uh, if you're going to clean the bathroom, why are you going to clean the bathroom? You know, if you're going to make a meal, why are you going to make a meal? If you're going to post something, why are you going to post it? Okay. And if it's generated by somehow correcting things or making people wrong or trying to educate people, let that go. Post something that's cool. Post some steampunk something. Post something funny. Post a dog licking himself. You know, whatever. Uh, post something that's going to put a smile on people's faces. If you can say, I'm going to post this because it's going to make people happy, then you're on the right path, okay? That's what I want you guys to focus on today. Um, that's what I got for you. This is Art Talk, and uh, we do this every weekday morning, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, if it's something of value you guys get, I hope that you'll consider sharing it on Art Talk, or at least spread the word, tell your friends. Uh, we enjoy doing this. This is episode 258. Uh, tomorrow... Uh, will be an episode of Fireball Malibu Vlog, uh, closing in on a thousand episodes. I think it's 979 or something like that. Uh, it's going to be featured in the 1981 Excalibur, which is going to be cool. And we do some other things, obviously, in the vlog. But uh, if this is of value, uh, share it and pick up one of our coloring books. 10% uh, of proceeds for all books goes to Dog Rescue and to Ocean Cleanup. This is Mustang. It's Mustang Week here at Fireball Publishing. I hope you guys have a spectacular day today. We will see you tomorrow. Incredible. Bye.